Good morning. Welcome to Main Avenue Fellowship Sundry Online. And we welcome you and we pray that you will be ministered to uh, in word and in song. And yes, we want to hear you sing in a, in a little bit. So um, <coughs> as Main Avenue Fellowship's uh, tr church treasurer, uh, it is, uh, some of you know about this, but some are far away. Um, we thank you for your faithfulness in, in your giving. Um, we have a couple of ideas for folk that um, aren't around to, to make their, their tithes and offering donation. Uh, you can mail your uh, check to the ch church mail. It's post office box 720 in Sundry. And it's T0M1XO0, I guess they call it. And um, at this time, we are not uh, doing e-transfers. Um, but uh, there also is a, a, another way. I will gladly come to your home, even just, to, well, especially just to the door to pick up your donation. And um, we just you just have to call me, and I will do it. And that's only for the sundry area, however. <laughs> and <coughs> I can't drive across Canada and come back. So anyway, we, we appreciate your faithfulness, and we appreciate um, all that we're doing to keep our um, online presence, but also for those at home. And um, we, regardless, we all know we all still have bills. And we do have to do our part. But thank you very much. And we know that together we will manage to get through everything. And um, we just want to let you know that we are thinking of you and praying for you at this time. Um, at this moment, Pastor Todd is going to come. And he's going to come and share with us a couple of things. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to come up there. Oh, you're not? Okay. No, no, I'm trying to. Trying to find, I've got all these things all over the place here. There we go. Hi there. So the camera's been moved around. Uh, and just let me get the video up here because we need the video. So where is my video? There we go. So we're almost set to go here. All right. So everybody's kind of doing double duties, triple duties, and that. So. Um, this is uh, for our more missional moment, and we're kind of doing things a little differently. Um, uh, just trying to less movement around and all over the place here. So uh, this is from my missional moment. A Christ-like Christ disciple set apart by the Holy Spirit, prayerfully sent out by the church, affirmed by the Nazarene missions to cross cultural barriers for the purpose of spreading the scripture of holiness. And if you look in Romans 12, 2, it reads, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God, uh, God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So what does it mean to be personally transformed and renewed in Christ? Well, let me tell you, this is a familiar scripture to many of us and is usually seen through a personal lens, but it is a task of the missionary to put our renewal, our, our renewed minds into practice with a way that we imagine a transformed world. Nazarene missionaries help transform the world. Nazarene missionaries spread scriptural holiness. Two words, transformation and holiness. So what does that look like in today's society? As the Holy uh, Spirit prepares a way for transformational holiness, Nazarene missions sends its missionaries in partnership with local com communities to join in God's movement of restoration and peace in the hearts and lives. Be encouraged to become a part of the movement of God through the people of God. And let's watch a video here. I think all of us in church need to keep in mind that historically, most missionaries are called by God studies that have asked missionaries at what age they felt God's call in their life. And the conclusion is that the, a large majority, 80-90%, felt that call before the age of 18. That means a number of things for us. One of which is that when a young person in the church testifies to a call to missions, 
we as a church need to strongly, strongly affirm that hope. Sometimes it's tempting to smile and say, that's cute, to pat the child on the head. And I think that's the wrong response. I think the correct response is, that's wonderful. And we as a church will pray for you, we'll encourage you, we'll help you find learning opportunities as you move forward through your life toward that goal. a series of experiences that each in a small way confirmed to me that I was where God wanted me to be, that we as a couple were where God wanted us to be. And the knowledge that there are uh, some young men, women in PNG who have come to faith in Jesus because I obeyed God's calling in my life has been the confirmation for me. It's important to remember that God has put a call on all of us. We don't even have to wait to feel that nudge or that whisper inside. We can look into his word and read his call. The call is a call to go, but sometimes it's going a very short distance. Maybe it's to a neighbor or to a friend. Maybe it's just the distance between our wallet and the offering plate. But God has called all of us to be involved. All right. Well, we're a little more spaced out. You can take that however you want to take that. <laughs> we we did want to do some music today, and um, so we are keeping our distance here, even though we are here, um, just to to sing a few songs, to uh, lift our voices in praise, and uh, we are so glad that you have joined us online and um, let's uh, have a word of prayer as uh, Todd just flips through over to the words for us so that we're ready to go. Um, we'll just say a, a, a quick prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us, Lord. I pray for our I country, for pray for our world, pray for um, all that's happening around us, Lord. There are those who are very scared. There are those who are very anxious. Um, <coughs> Lord, in all of this, we know that you are on the throne still, and you are, you are our, our Lord and our King of Kings, and we are so thankful for the peace and calm that you are able to give. Lord, that does not mean that we ever say we don't need to worry about this because God's got it under control. Um, we still need to do our due diligence. We still need to trust in our doctors and our, our medical personnel that tell us to do things, uh, and, and we need to follow those instructions. So that's why we're just doing this in an online fashion today. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would keep all those safe at home. Help us for, for those that jobs may be impacted. Um, in our local area here, I'm, uh, I've just been so <laughs> concerned for our small businesses. And, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would be with those families that are impacted by closures. Um, the serving people that aren't going to have their tips and their pay, 
uh, if people aren't in the restaurants. And Lord, I pray that you would just be with our with our, our town and our country and our world as we uh, do a bit of groping in the darkness in this. And we ask, Lord, for your guidance and for your wisdom. I pray, Lord, that we would be patient with each other. Uh, this might be more exposure to our housemates than we're used to. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help us to extend grace wherever we can. We thank you, Lord, for your time spent with us. We know that you are by our side in all of this, Lord, and we, we thank you for your love and for your um, compassion and for the way that you are impacting the world around us. And we, we thank you for your servants that are out there uh, encouraging and praying uh, and, and doing some very big work in hospitals and things too. And we ask that you be with us, Lord, in our time of worship. The first song we're going to sing is Thrive. And uh, I wanted to do that one this morning because right now we are concentrating on just surviving a in a lot of places. And you want so much more for us. And so I want us to, to just think about those words as we, as we worship here this morning. And, and Lord, uh, at the end, we're going to sing Simplicity. And we really do want the simplicity of the truth of your love to shine through in everything that we do here this morning and in the weeks to come. And we thank you in advance for how you will cover us, for how you will walk with us on this journey. Please be with Pastor Todd as he brings the message. And Lord, if there's those at home that are lonely, that are concerned, that are uh, needing a word, that they would reach out, that they would contact us or, or someone else that they love and trust and, and just won't be at home and, and uh, fretting. And I pray, Lord, that you would give us the words to speak. In your name we pray. Amen. Thrive. <laughs> This worn and weary land where many a dream has died. Like a tree planted by the water, we never will run dry. So, living water flowing through, God, we thirst for more of you. Fill our hearts with wonder.
<laughs> Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see.
all good. Lord, give me a willing heart. Lord, give me a brand new start. Create in me a love that's real. Give me a willing heart. Lord, give me a
Remember how we're going to do that nice, smooth transition right into everything? My sermon's at the back. That's pretty cool, eh? <laughs> Decided to do things a little differently today and start off with some of the announcements and that and just trying to smooth things out. Now you get to watch me walk all the way back and go grab my sermon. And now all the way back up. Which one is it? This one? That one there? It'd help if I had fingernails, eh? <laughs> oh, there are six pages. Oh, good. Well, <coughs> well, preach it. We're going to mm, just let it go. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's start off with a word of prayer. Uh, Precious Father, thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to be able to, to gather. Um, and Lord, it's a little different gathering. We're gathering online. We're gathering, uh, Lord, like the... Um, in a new way, and in a new time. I just pray, Lord, that you would be with the other churches that are, that are, some have been doing this for a long time, others have just started doing this. But Lord, this is like the Roman roads, you know, and a little bit new technology, and, and Lord, we're able to get that message out to so many more people. And Lord, I, I give you thanks for keeping us safe and sound. I just pray, Lord, that you continue to, uh, to watch over our nation, our, our leaders, our, our uh, emergency workers, care workers, uh, transport drivers, Lord, that are traveling back and forth. Um, oh, just everybody that we, we don't really think about until times like this when we're relying on them. And then suddenly they're there. And uh, Lord, bless them. Keep them safe and sound and keep them healthy, Lord. I just pray that you would uh, help us through this. We're, we're leaning on you. We're trusting in you, Lord. And that is, uh, that's a, the wonderful thing about this, is that uh, you are faithful to your children. And Lord, help us to be even more faithful to you. And Lord, I just pray that you'd watch over us all. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So as we gather today, and, and I, I, I mentioned it, uh, the, the scriptures actually started getting more and more out there when the Romans came and conquered all these lands because suddenly they were building roads and with roads came a more secure way to travel and with a more secure way to travel, people were wandering about all over the place. Now we've got a little bit backwards now because we don't want you traveling on the roads. We don't want you going out and visiting people. We want you to stay indoors but the Roman road is now the internet. And we have a whole bunch of people on the internet watching. And uh, I know I've seen a couple of them pop up there. Hi, Walter. Uh, Walter's always the first on and says, hey, how you doing? And we go, well, man, it's good to see you. Well, good to hear from you. Anyways, but we're having a rough time of it. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's really tough to, to put into words the fear that some people have out there. And so many of our lives have been changed. Like I think of our Saturday morning coffees are, are changed because suddenly we can't gather. Our, our church is changed because we can't gather. But the thing that hasn't changed is God's Word. And God's Word is absolutely amazing. I want to take you to, uh, um, in, in scriptures here, uh, well, it's not really in scriptures. It's A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Uh, you can look it up in the Bible, but it's not going to be there. Anyways, A Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the age, or it was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredul uh, incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope, and it was a winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us, and we're all going direct to heaven, and we're all going direct the other way. So let's kind of take a look at the times that we're living in. We have on the one hand so many who are panicking and are overreacting to the hopelessness of the pandemic. There's people out there that are losing their minds. 
They're thinking, oh, we have to get whatever we can get and make sure that we are stocked up for the next 20 years. In fact, the interesting thing, signs on the Costco uh, stores now, it says we will not be refunding toilet paper. And I went, thank goodness for that, because I don't think I want somebody's returns on toilet paper. I just a thought coming out of my mind, but anyways. There are so many who have made the run for the essentials, the face masks, the hand sanitizers, and the toilet paper. Okay, I understand face masks. That one really makes sense because people want to ensure they have a face mask they're not breathing in the airborne viruses that could potentially be out there, which, let's face it, it is out there. Hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer. I never had hand sanitizer when I was a kid. Thank goodness for that because if, could you see my grandmother if she wanted, I said a dirty word and she goes to wash my mouth out with soap and I got a mouthful of hand sanitizer, I'd be one drunk kid. But soap, soap and water, that's what they're recommending, soap and water. So what do you do? Wash your hands with soap and water. Water and soap works really well, and I have a ton of that in the house. I don't know where it comes from, but suddenly it's there, and then when it's gone, another one shows up. It's amazing. It's, it's a wonderful thing. I don't know how it works. Wash well, wash often, wash with soap and water. And I can also suggest that if you carry a small uh, bar of soap, like the whole, little hotel packages of soap, if you carry one of those in your pocket, and every so often just rub, rub your hands on it and put it back in your pocket, I guarantee you, you won't touch your lips. Because they'll be all, anyways. Now this one truly blows my mind. Toilet paper. COVID has nothing to do with bottom issues. It has everything to do with the coughs. So why the run on the runs cleaner? See how I worked that in there? Runs. Anyways. I can see a run on facial tissue for covering one's mouth while coughing. But I don't understand toilet paper. I really don't. So anyways, that's beside the point. The evils of society... The selfishness of individuals seeking only to ensure their own well-being or even worse, profiting from the distress of those who are living in a hopeless fear. Hopeless, a word that is routed in the darkness of the evil one. He lives in the fear and he feels the fear through any means available. Many of the pastors who heard the call to seek an alternate method of ministry in this time and, and are rather wary of what this means. I will tell you right now, as soon as you say to a preacher, you're going to have to close your church for the next, oh, I don't know, month. I'm pretty sure every preacher goes, oh, what? Well, what's going to happen to everybody? They're just going to leave and they're never going to come back. I'm not saying all preachers. but I'm saying there's probably the odd one going out there going, will they ever return? What's going to happen to the relationships that we've built? There's a fear that suddenly comes into it. And then I look at it and I go, you know what? In a lot of the times where there was that fear that churches are going to be barren, the church is filled up. Because there was this time when the churches were the safe place. And in times of need, the churches fulfilled the needs. We can do it online. It's a wonderful thing. We are able to get the message out there online. It's a wonderful thing. It's Roman Roads Part 2, or 2.0 if you want to call it that. 20 years ago, we never had this technology. 20 years ago, we couldn't have done this. 20 years ago, this church would have been closed. And we would have had to, I don't know, uh, maybe meet out in the back in the, in the park here and yell. And everybody would be standing around in the cold going, this is ridiculous. But there's that need to gather. And, and if you know right now, Natalie's probably looking at the feed, seeing who's all on the feed. There's quite a few people watching, and we are a family together on that feed. But there is that fear, that fear of not being able to connect, that fear of not being able to, to give the message. 
Some welcome the opportunity to explore what God has in store for the future of his church. But for some, this is the best of times. For others, this is the worst of times. There is hope in this time. I could focus on the fear and the trepidation, but the media is doing a fabulous job of this. If you want to really get scared, watch the media. Because it's all gloom and doom. Even, even the special music they have to introduce breaking news is fear and trepidation. It's built to play on your mind. And they do it because they want you to be focused on what they have to say. And it's the same thing over and over again. We can focus on the end of days. Consider the signs as noted by numerous people over the la past few weeks. It's funny, I was talking to a, a buddy of mine, and he says, yeah, we we're talking about the end of times and, and made note that there is, a, there is a fire in the south. Remember the fires in Australia? Terrible fires down there. And then there was the, uh, the floods. Australia just got hit with floods. And there's always floods. Somewhere in the world, there's always a flood. Uh, locusts in India. You ever see the newspaper articles on locusts in India? Massive famines, droughts, global warming, chaos and calamity, unrest in the masses, and the list goes on and on. But this is not God's list. This is mankind's machinations of what is going on in the world right now. This is mankind looking at it and going, what can we be scared about today? Seriously. God has his plan, and it's beyond the knowledge of mankind. If you go to Isaiah, Isaiah 55. So Isaiah 55. I've got to adjust my papers here. Isaiah 55, starting at 6. It says here, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteousness their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. I love that part right there where it says, let them turn to the Lord, and he will have mercy on them. It doesn't have a time limit on it. It is strictly, let them turn to me, and I will have mercy. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Go back to Charles Dickens. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. The foolishness is being played out right now before us. How much the world seeks for self when it makes sense to listen to the Lord. Seek the kingdom of the Lord and bear one another's burden. Love your neighbor as yourself. These are all taken out of the scriptures. And it says, look out for each other. The self will be taken care of as we care for others. Because as we care for others, others care for us. And it is a beautiful circle. You shouldn't have to worry. We shouldn't have to fear because we're in it together. As the mighty red green says, we're all in this together. Keep your sticks on the ice. If we seek out ways to help one another uh, um, to stay healthy by sharing bum fluff and sanitary wipes, then we're helping ourselves in the long run because those around us, the ones we come into contact with the most, will be able to maintain their health. And therefore, we are maintaining our health by helping them to maintain their health. Can you see where this is just a circuitous thing? Circu circu it's a roundabout thing. You can maintain your own health through the practice of helping others. And it's a wonderful thing. Why hoard when you can help? By hoarding stuff for ourselves, we become like, become like Howard Hughes. Millions spent but trapped inside a living nightmare. Anybody know about Howard Hughes? He was so fearful of, of slippers that he wore empty boxes of tissue. That's what he wore for slippers. 
And he did that because he went through so much tissue. He didn't have a problem with the bone fluff. He was having a problem with getting enough facial tissues. And that's what he wore his slippers. He was a recluse. He had billions of dollars, but he did not have quality of life. He had no relationships, except with the people that he paid. He had no faith in the world itself. He could only rely on himself, one person. I don't think I could live in that. It's being trapped inside a living nightmare. He was well-capped, but lacking in the relationship that keeps family, family. God's thoughts are beyond comprehension. His ways are for our best, and yet we cling to the dark rather than speak of the light. God says, let the wicked forsake their ways and the righteous, unrighteous their thoughts. All have the opportunity in these times to seek out the ways to reach out. We hear of the disturbances and of the difficulties, but I want to tell you of the good news. And I want to hear the good news. I'm not going to hear the good news on CBC. I'm not going to hear the good news on CTV Newsnet. I'm going to hear of death, devastation, and sickness. But I can hear good news happening in our town. I can hear the good news where the sundry ministerial, the group of churches, has all come together and said, you know what, even though we cannot minister in person, we can still minister online. We will share this amongst all the community. It's on sundry, let's talk nice. It's on, uh, on a buy and sell. It's on all the different places saying that there's services available online. There's also the plus one, the food. The food hampers are available. And people are asking, what are we going to do for the kids that have no food? Plus one. Well, how are we going to pay for it? Plus one. It's free. I'm having a rough time. Well, are you having a rough time mentally? Yes. Burden bearers down the road. Well, I don't think I can afford a counselor. Talk to them. They will help. They know what they're going to do. The church community is rallying together. That's good news for Sundry. That's good news for our community. That's good news for our world because we're paying it forward. And who has taught us this? God. Here's some more good news. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Thank goodness we need not to rely on our own devices. It's way too easy to make a mess of things and leave, out, leave it to the wiles of man. A way can be found. If we leave it to ourselves and we look at it and go, well, I'm pretty sure I could fix this with duct tape and a little bit of coat wire, I don't think it's going to work. But if we look to God, we had everything before us. We had nothing before us. I want to change that just a little bit. We have everything before us. We had nothing before us. One simple word. We have everything before us. The Lord goes before us in all ways. The Lord makes our path straight. The Lord has already led us to a promise And that promise is all we need to do is grab a hold of it and say, I know of this promise. I know of the love of God. I know that Christ has promised that those who believe in him will know eternity. But before that promise, there was nothing. We used to have nothing before us. At one point in time, most people did not know of God. And I know some people say, well, I was born into a church family. I know exactly who God was right from the time of my birth. And I was like, I'm sorry, but when I was one year old, I knew of two things. I'm wet, I'm hungry. I knew of nothing outside of that except for my mom and dad. That was it. I don't remember anything about God when I was one year old. Some may say I had an epiphany when I was one. That's fine. But we did not know 
What is it? What's the age that we usually say it's about 12, 8 or 12 or somewhere in there where it's uh, where they choose accountability, the age of accountability when you know God and you have confirmed that you know who God is and you take, well, in, in the Catholic Church, they take their first communion and different things like that. God is always there. God's always known us. God always has our back. But at one point in time, we had to turn around and say, you know what? I really do know you now. I know you in my heart. I know your exact message. And I want to grow in that. We had nothing before us at one time. Yet with God, we have everything before us. His answer is clear. The time has been stated for the end and the hope of the future has been secured. But we need to ask. We only need to ask or to seek that which is ahead of us. And it's in his word. If you go to Daniel 12. <coughs> so Daniel 12. This is a time when, when uh, Daniel was, was, uh, was um, he was still understanding the, the, um, the dreams that were coming, and he was able to interpret the dreams. Daniel 12, starting at right at 1. But this is an absolutely fabulous passage. Daniel 12. At the time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. What an absolutely fabulous, fabulous message to have sitting right before you. Everyone whose name is written in the book will be delivered. The multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. There's a lot of times people don't talk about the other side. But there is the two sides to the equation. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens. And those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, roll up and seal the words of the scrolls until the, the time of the end. Many will go there. And there, and there to increase knowledge. So think about that. It's right there. Daniel's been told exactly what's going to happen. There is coming an end. And in that end, there will be some who will go to glory. There will some, unfortunately, who will not. There are some who have chosen a path that leads to fear, and darkness, and a forever that does not include the light. They have chosen that. But we choose to live in the light. We choose to follow Jesus Christ. And in that, what we need to do is start to learn to trust in the power and the magnitude of Christ. So instead of fearing for what's going to happen tomorrow, are we going to have a service? Are we going to have a gathering and to trust in God, saying that, yes, we can do all things in his name. Earn, or learn the strength of the Lord. Learn the strength of the Spirit as he flows through each and every one of us. Don't be fearful. Be courageous and walk boldly, because that is what the people of Sundry need. That is what the people of the world need is to know that there's a, uh, a brightness coming. Because everybody right now is saying this is the end of times, this is the worst of times, we are not going to make it through this. I have an answer for that too. There is the word of God, no matter what happens, God is in complete control, and in that, find the peace. In Matthew 24, starting at, at verse 3, so Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, as Jesus was lit, sitting on the mountain of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, 
When will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? And Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. There's a truth to that. There are many out there saying, if we do not curb this, the world will completely end. God says, don't let people deceive you. Be smart, be intelligent. Use your head for more than a hat rack. Use your mind and listen to the words of the Lord. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and, they, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Words for today. We are fighting a war against a virus. It's going to happen. But do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nations will rise against nations and the kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of the birth pains. <clears throat> the one good thing about the virus is that we haven't heard of any unrest. Now, is that because there is no unrest and people are just too scared to fight each other? Or is it this is better ratings? I don't know. But I'll tell you this right now. God says all of these are the beginning of the birth pangs. We will know of these things. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. If you thought walking down the road of Christianity was just going to be a wonderful walk in the park, most of the times it is, but there's those out there who will say, where was your God when? They will persecute. Your God is not a loving God if he allows this to happen. You know what? Viruses happen. Wars happen. Plagues happen. Things happen. God protects. God walks with us. God has promised us something even better. Don't be fearful. Be walking in the hope of the promise. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the ones who stand firm to the end will be saved. The ones who boldly proclaim the love of God, the love of Jesus Christ, the eternity through Christ, will know a greatness, a love, a glory, even more than I can describe. I can't even begin to describe what heaven's going to be like because I don't even understand it myself. But I can tell you this, there will be no more disease. There will be no more ravaging of, the, of, of anything. It will be perfection. That is declaring the truth. My dad used to tell me, he'd say, you know, sometimes you got to put up a, with a little bit of the garbage in order to get to the good stuff. And it's like, okay, that's what builds perseverance. Okay, now can I have a lollipop? No, you don't understand. You need to do your chores before you can have dessert. You need to eat your Brussels sprouts before you get dessert. You need to eat this before you get that. You need to do this before I will give you this. You want a bicycle, you do your chores. I don't like my chores, but I like my bicycle. There's things that we do here. It's tough. Preaching the word in a world that doesn't want to hear the word is a tough thing to do. But in the end, it's going to be well worth it because there'll be people in heaven that we didn't even expect to see there. And it'll be because of a seed that was planted by one person or two people. I'm going to show up to heaven, and I'm counting on it, and there's going to be people standing around going, what is he doing here? Never thought I'd see him. It's even a special place for lawyers. Um, just joking. 
Some of my best friends are lawyers. Um, where was I? At that time, blah, 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 because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So what is the timing of the end of times? Go to 36. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. The end of times will come. There will be a time when this will all cease. We don't know when. So how do we predict it? You don't. How are we ready for it? Be ready all the time. Know the message. Know what God has in store. Stand strong and firm in the power of Jesus. Strong, stand strong and firm in what the Holy Spirit has to offer each and every person. A strength and a wisdom that is beyond our own understanding. We have it within us. We just have to say, Lord, take over. I cannot, cannot do this myself. Teach me how to be more like you. The time is not now, but it could be now. The day is not known, yet it could be known. The way of the Lord is known. The way of is not known by those who do not wish to know. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Seek not the ways of man, but rather seek out the way of the Lord and look for the goodness in the world. Seek out the light. Stand firm in the chaos of the times and lean on the wisdom of the king. His way is the only way and his path is the only path. When the world starts telling you lies about how everybody on the world is going to die, don't believe it. We have a God that is a loving God, more powerful than anything we can come up with. He is not going to let his children be destroyed. He wants us to understand his message, that he has a place for each and every one of us. Let's hold on to that. When the news says one thing, thank God for the fact that we can still watch the news. When the world says there's no more food on the shelves, be thankful that down the street is plus one, and one phone call will get food. The food banks still have food. When the world says there's no more toilet paper, Lean on the understanding that the manufacturers of toilet paper said, we've got tons of it. <laughs> Relax. And toilet paper on. I had to say it. Sorry, Jeff. There's nothing in this world that the Lord cannot overcome. So let's just uh, take some time and, and have a word of prayer. Precious Father, thank you so much that you are with us each and every day, that you that you are our guide, our Father, our Creator. Thank you, Lord, that you have uh, provided us opportunities to be able to share a message into this world. I pray, Lord, that you would calm minds and hearts, that those hearts and minds would, would come to know that you have this under control, that you are the one who knows the beginning and the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega. And you will always, always be there. Lord, when you preach eternity and have guaranteed us a place in that eternity, 
that eternity has no end. It is beyond our comprehension. In the infinite of your wisdom, in the infinite of your love, is where we rest. Lord, help us as we go through this time. I pray for those who are suffering right now with the illness. I pray a miraculous healing upon them. Lord, I just pray that you would help those who are, are working on the medicines and that to be able to help to rectify the situation, to destroy the virus. I pray, Lord, that you would give them wisdom and guidance and that you'd be with them through the, the whole way. For those who are suffering, give them strength. For the doctors who are caring for them, give them patience. For those who have passed, Lord, be with their families. Lord, we look to you and we give you thanks that you are with us now and forever. Thank you for this time. I pray you be with your churches as they reach out into communities to spread your message, to plant seeds, to be able to, to come alongside and comfort those who are anxious. Lord, I pray you drive out the fear. Drive out the fear. There should be no fear in us. Lord, thank you. Thank you for our families, for our friends, for our friends who are family. I pray your blessing on each and every one of us, and Lord, open our hearts and our minds to your leading where we might be able to help someone else in these times. And I pray your blessing upon each and every one. In Jesus' precious name, amen. And we're going to do this again next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. But until then, may God bless each and every one of you. And if you do need help, please do not hesitate to email us, call us, talk to somebody. Never think that you're alone because we're always here. We're always available and we always want to try and help where we can. Sometimes we can't do it in person, but you know what? We can leave something outside your door or if you just want to drop something off with us, call us ahead of time and we'll open up the doors and uh, you can come in, drop it off and and uh, there you go. With that, Lord bless you all, and we'll talk to you again real soon. God bless.